now I'm on time. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Advent 3 service today. It's our Lessons and Carols, and I want to welcome our harpist, Stephanie Sussmeyer. We've had her here before, and we are delighted to have you back, Stephanie, so thank you. Uh, there are a couple of announcements, of course. Uh, there are a lot of recoveries going on from the Friday night Christmas party, but, you know, it was a great party. Uh, thank you to Karen Morelli and all that helped her, our caterer, our music from uh, Jimmy and others, and it was just a great party. Everybody had a wonderful time. Also, I want to thank Betty Nathanson and the Altar Sanctuary Squad for getting the church so beautifully decorated for us with all the poinsettias and flowers, so thank you to them. Um, also, this coming Saturday at 4 o'clock, 4 to 6 p.m., we have our annual live nativity out front on the lawn. Maybe you saw the manger is already out there, and we are looking forward to that. We will hear the Christmas story read. The characters of the Christmas story will be there in costume. There will be Christmas carols. Uh, it will be a wonderful time. So please come. Invite your neighbors and relatives to come. It's a wonderful event, not just for children. Oh, yeah, we have a camel. Richard reminded me. He's going to ride it. No, he's not. Um, on Sunday, next Sunday at 10 o'clock, we have our fourth Sunday of Advent service. And then at 8 o'clock, we have our Christmas Eve service. So we invite you to both of them. Christmas Eve, of course, is going to have some very special music. And there is a service on New Year's Eve day on the 31st uh, at 10 o'clock, our regular service, post-Christmas. And I will be giving a New Year message. And so let us begin now by listening to the introit. morning. Please join me in the call to worship, which is found in your bulletin. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Declare God's glory among all peoples. Praise the Lord, and praise be praise. Let heaven be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the whole creation sing for joy at the presence of God who is coming to us. Let us worship God. Please join me in Whoops. Please join me in singing hymn number 242 Love Came Down at Christmas. Yeah, the candle came down too. <laughs>
Today is the third Sunday of Advent. We are lighting the candle of joy. Today we relight the first two candles of the Advent wreath, the candles of hope and peace. Now we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. Our hearts are filled with joy when we remember that God loved us so much that he came to us in the flesh, came to us in the baby Jesus. As the coming of our Savior draws nearer, our joy builds with our anticipation of his birth. Jesus came into our world to be, bring us joy and abundant life. May this candle burn brightly in our hearts today and lead us to the Christ child. Let us continue our Advent journey. Loving God, we are getting ready to welcome you and we invite you to be present in our worship. It's true that the world was not ready to welcome your son on that night in Bethlehem so long ago, but today on this side of Bethlehem, the cross and the empty tomb, we are more than ready to listen to your voice, to be obedient to your son, to be empowered by your spirit. Thank you for your presence with us today because you are Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. And now I'd like to invite the children to come forward. Okay. Good to see you guys today, Leo and Cash and Romeo. Romeo subdued today. Now, I don't know how good you are at spelling, but I have three letters here that are all mixed up. Can you figure out what word it's supposed to be? Joy, Leo, very good. Yeah, and you know, we talk about joy on this third Sunday of Advent. We know that the angels came to the shepherds, right, in the fields, and they said, we bring you good tidings of great joy. Why were they bringing good tidings of great joy? Why do you think they were there to announce something? Yeah, that the baby Jesus is born. And that is great joy for all of us because Jesus came down to earth to be just like us. He started out as a baby. He got to be a little boy like Romeo. He got to be like you, Leo. He got to be like you, Cash. And he grew up to tell us how to love each other and to forgive each other. And that brings us great joy. Now, the other thing that can bring us a lot of joy is if we live like Jesus told us to live. And what is that about? Live in peace, yeah, and in love, and to treat one another kindly, and to help one another, right? And so all of these things together give us great joy at Christmas. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, you brought joy to the world. You brought joy into our hearts. Help us to get that joy out of our hearts and share it with the world, but especially those around us. Amen. Okay, you guys can go to Sunday school. Thank you for helping me. Please join me in prayer. Most gracious God, we are bound for Bethlehem. And we come with gratitude that you are always with us as we journey. Help us as we travel to stay on the path 
and keep us focused on the purpose of our mission. We confess that in the busyness of this season, we stray from the holy day and concentrate instead on the holiday. So we would ask that you would guide us. As we put up our Christmas lights, remind us of your light. Grant us the patience to pause in our tasks and bask in the promise of the star we follow. As we trim our trees, let us take time to share the treasured memories of family gatherings so that it is your love that decorates our homes. As we shop for gifts, keep us mindful of the birthday we celebrate and the gift we have been given in the manger. When we bake cookies and make candy, let us stir in forgiveness, serenity, peace, joy, and love so that our presence reflect the gift of your presence. Whenever we are this year for Christmas, remind us that our true home is our Emmanuel, the one who came to be with us forever. We are bound for Bethlehem, O God. We each must answer as to whether there is room inside the inn of our hearts for your son. May our lives be your manger, Lord Jesus, and may the world be flooded with your light and with your love. We pray in the name of the one whom the wisest seek, the Messiah who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us continue our worship by presenting our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings.
Let us pray. O God, who has promised to come, has come, and has promised to come again, we are preparing ourselves for your return. And so we offer these gifts and ourselves to make the way straight for Jesus our Savior. Use these gifts and use us so that others might know of your saving love through Jesus the Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 3. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To Adam he said, because you have listened to your wife, and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return." The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven. I'm sorry, I read too much. I apologize. And now join me in singing hymn number 230, O Little Town of Bethlehem, just the first two verses.
Our second lesson is from the book of Genesis chapter 22. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. And now please join me in the next carol. Oh, sorry, don't sing. <laughs> The next lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And now another carol from our harpist. Thank you. 
The fourth lesson comes from the book of Micah, chapter 5. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she, who is in labor, gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. Please, let's join together in carol on page 218. It came upon a midnight clear, verses 1 and 2. Our fifth lesson comes from Matthew 1, 18 to 23. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had a mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Please now we'll have another by our harpist. Thank you. 
the sixth lesson comes from the uh, chapter of Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The uh, next carol that we will all sing together is O Come All You, Fa all Come all you Faithful, uh, page 234, verses 1 and 2. The seventh lesson is taken from Luke chapter 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Oh, I'm sorry. Michelle will now sing the next carol.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When, when he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east and went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. And now we'll hear We Three Kings from Stephanie. Now for the ninth lesson from John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through th all things were made by him. Without him, nothing was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, 
so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made by him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet all who received him, those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, not of human decision or a husband's will, but of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Please join me in singing our last carol, Silent Night, verses 1 and 2 of 239, and we will stand for this. And just so you know, we have already done the prayer in the Lord's Prayer, and so we will go right to the hymn that Stephanie will play for us. So please stand and sing Silent Night with me. Please be seated.
We hope you'll join us after the service for coffee hour in Fellowship Hall. We can greet one another, and maybe it's a little early, but say Merry Christmas. And now may the music lead you heavenward. May the lights lead you to Bethlehem. And may the grace of our coming Lord Jesus and the love of God who sent him and the power and peace and joy of the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those whom you love today and forever. Amen.